friend, Ryder Christopherson, here again with another First Listen Review. <clears throat> and as you can probably tell from my voice, I have not been awake for very long, but uh, I have been checking out this new album from Steve Lukather, which uh, I was, I could not wait to listen to this thing. It's called Bridges. Um, I actually just seen an interview with him the other day about this, and uh, I was very excited to hear this. And I'll get right to the point. This thing did not, did not leave me disappointed at all. Um, he kind of describes it as the closest thing you're going to get to a total album. And uh, he wasn't lying about that. It's got David Page on like five of the tracks. And he's got him co-writing, looks like, three of the tracks on here. Uh, Joseph, Joseph Williams sings background in all of them, plays synth on half the album, or actually all the album. Uh, plays percussion on some, produced the whole thing. It's got his kid Trev playing on uh, the first song, actually wrote most of the first song and uh, plays guitar on that and um, man it's got uh, Simon Phillips back on drums on half of the songs so and he kind of basically said this is the reason he kind of did this album in the interview that I saw um, was because they can't use the Toto name to, well they can but uh, there's legal stuff going on with the Toto name so um, they just decided that they were going to do it under his name and People in the know will know, and people that don't, unfortunately, will probably miss out on hearing some really good Toto music. But um, the first thing I really noticed about this was the production on this is extremely uh, late 80s style production, which I guess was also intentional. <clears throat> right down to the guitar sound for the solos on this is they got that really slick, um, you know, uh, produced, um, I don't know, produced is probably not a very good word for it, but it's got a lot of effects like that you would uh, hear like on uh, 80s stuff like direct from the rack style effects it's not uh, something that sounds like an amp mic'd up it sounds like it's like a direct you know signal from an effects uh, processor or something like that which they were used very well uh, in my opinion like like full uh, disclosure here Toto is one of my all time favorite bands and Steve Lukather is probably one of my all time favorite guitarists um, so that's part of the reason I was extremely excited to get this. Also, Simon Phillips. If you don't know the history of Simon Phillips, like he played with Pete Townsend and The Who, and that was also Pete Townsend and The Who, my favorites of all time. So there was a lot of stuff going for this already before I even heard it <laughs> for my style and my taste. Um, as far as the song, it's a really short album. It's only 35 minutes long. So um, I saw that and I was kind of like bummed. But after I heard it, I was like, you know what? That was like the perfect running time. I really didn't need any more, and it makes me want to go back and listen to this again. Because one of the other albums I got yesterday <clears throat> was, I couldn't wait for it to be over, it was so long. Even though I loved it, I was like drooling by the time the thing ended, it was so long. So, anyway, this uh, was about half the length of that one. I'll get to that one later on, you hear that one later on. But uh, this one here, it starts out with a song, it was mainly written by his son Trev. Um, says he pretty much brought it in just about done. He added him and Joseph added a few things to it. Um, and it's just an upbeat. Uh, and it's kind of funny that it's called Far From Over and listen to the lyrics of it. It kind of describes um, his, um, Steve's opinion on life as it is right now, that he's not done yet. So uh, then the next one, Not Can My Kind of People, is kind of an upbeat rock and song, and if I didn't mention, it's got Leland Sklar playing bass on three of the tracks, and Leland's just a killer bass player. Um, another upbeat song, uh, lyrics written by Stan Lynch, who was the drummer for uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers for many, many years, and uh, I guess him and Steve have been good buddies for years and years and years, and uh, you know, the lyrics of this one are kind of funny, um, a little tongue-in-cheek, but it's a good song. And then track number three is probably my favorite one. It's the most Toto sounding one on the whole album. It's like a mid tempo ish type song. It just sounds like a Toto song from like Kingdom of Desire type days, like when that, that album came out. Um, it kind of reminds me of that time frame, and uh, which is great. That's, I, I mean, I'm not going to ever say anything bad about Toto, and that was like one of my favorite time periods for the band. I just listened to this band a lot back in those days, still do, but that was like when I was really, really deep into Toto <clears throat> and uh, All Forever's Must End another slow well actually this is the first slower song it's kind of a balladish type uh, feel to it uh, lyrics written by Randy Goodrum 
It was written for thousands of people. I don't, couldn't even begin to name them all. Uh, just Tim and Lukather penned that one. A good, nice sounding ballad. And then When I See You Again, also another slower song, uh, which is basically written by Lukather, Page, and Williams, and it sounds just like a Toto song, like from the same era. Very catchy. All these songs are very catchy. I mean, this album from one tracks one through five so far just sound like classic Toto. Um, track six is where it takes a little bit of a turn. This song was actually the only one written by completely by an outside writer, Steve Majoria. Uh, I think I said that right. Her Major Eora. I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong, but anyway, it's a like a bluesy, jazzier, slower type song where. You know, Steve really gets to show off his singing and uh, more bluesy guitar playing, which I really like Steve's voice. I remember when I first heard him sing on uh, Kingdom of Desire, like as the main singer on everything. I didn't like enjoy it at first, but then over time I really grew to love his singing style and uh, appreciate it a lot more. I, cause it's, it's quite an abrupt change from the, uh, the singers that they had as their main lead singer. Uh, I know they've always taken turns singing, but... Uh, he took over all singing duties on that album, and it was quite an abrupt change from what, you know, they had done in the past with the higher, you know, tenor singers. He's because he doesn't sing all that super high stuff. He's got a very, he's got a deeper, more grittier voice, <clears throat> very soulful voice though. And then Burning Bridge is like same style-ish as that one, except an upbeat, bluesy, jazzy song. And Leland Scar on this one uh, is just tearing it up on bass and get. Two really cool solos in this one. You get to hear uh, the Steve Lukather that we all love playing guitar on this one. He really does a really very tasteful job. He, he does some shredding and slow bluesy and just a lot of feel, which is what I really love about his style of playing. And then it ends with a like a weird, the, the weirdest song, most experimental song. It's just got uh, some interesting chord changes. It's all this one's also written by. Lucather and Williams, so it's got page back on uh, keys on this one, and uh, it reminds me more of the earlier 70s style Toto type stuff, where they got a little bit more experimental on some of their songs. I mean, every single one of these songs could that easily been a Toto song, so I mean, I know I'm using that reference a lot, but I guess they went with this, like I said earlier, intentionally trying to make it sound that way, and I think they accomplished it. Um, I would easily give this album a 10. I mean, I don't do that very often, but I, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed this one. So, anyway, uh, feel free to share your thoughts on it if anybody else heard this or your Toto or Steve Lukather stories or anything you feel like sharing. And uh, talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, yeah, make sure to like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. All right, see you.